What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this steel chainsaw and the problem is that it was picked up from a garage sale so we don't know anything about it. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this chainsaw. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, I've always wanted a well-built chainsaw, but I've never found one online for a decent price. So when this one came up for sale at a garage sale, I couldn't pass it up. Unfortunately, the seller didn't have any information on it, so we're gonna have to do a lot of troubleshooting to figure out if it was worth the price. The first thing I wanna see is that the engine still has compression. The easiest way is to slowly pull on the rope and to see if the engine fights back. And I have to say, this engine is fighting back quite a lot, so we're good there. Now, if it doesn't fight back, then the engine might be worn out and it may not even start. I think I heard some fuel sloshing around the fuel tank. They may have tried to start it, and when it didn't start, they put it into the garage sale. I want to pour it out and inspect its condition. It still might be usable, or if it was stale or had water in it, it would explain why it didn't start for them. Well, the fuel is still fresh and there's no water in it, so I'm comfortable pouring it back into the tank. Before we do that, though, I want to check if the fuel filter is still connected to the line, and luckily it is. Now, if it wasn't, then the carburetor would be clogged with debris, and that would be the reason why it didn't start. The next thing I want to check is that it still has spark. And to do that, I'll disconnect the spark plug wire and connect a spark checker in line to the plug. Now you can get one of these online for a few dollars or borrow one from a mechanic. Now you don't have to remove the top cover, but I want to check the plug before we continue. You can tell that if the engine was running lean or rich with fuel by its color. And unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to tell anything as the plug was replaced, probably trying to figure out why it wouldn't start. And by the orange glow, we can tell that it does have spark, which is great news. The next thing I want to do is put some fuel into the engine and try starting it. This time, I'm going to put it in the spark plug hole versus the carburetor throat. With the cover off, it's just easier this way. Fortunately for us, it started and ran, which means we can now move on to the carburetor. Start by removing the air filter, followed by two small nuts, then disconnect the fuel line and the throttle and choke linkages. Let's start the inspection by removing the top plate, which is the pump side of the carburetor. The pumping diaphragm is clear, which makes it kind of tough to inspect. Now the carb body is pretty clean and looks like it's in working order, but there's some sawdust in two of the vented chambers, which is to be expected. We'll remove the diaphragm and clean out the sawdust. The next thing I want to check is the metering diaphragm, which is under this metal plate. We want to see if it's hardened over time. Now the body is also clean on this side of the carburetor, which probably means that the carburetor should be in working order. Now after removing the diaphragm and feeling it, it hasn't hardened at all, but it's also not very flexible. I would consider replacing it, but I don't have this type of diaphragm on hand. But for right now, we'll have to use this one and hope it works. We can replace it later on if it's a problem. Before we put the carburetor back together, I want to make sure that fuel will flow through the screen. Now pour some in the screen pocket and then press the rocker arm on the other side and watch for it to disappear. Well, it disappeared, but it took about twice as long as it should have. 
I'm going to remove the screen and clean it with some carburetor cleaner and at the same time remove the rocker arm assembly and needle to clear the fuel passage. Now with the screen gone we can test to make sure that it's actually the screen or the passage that's the problem. Well, it looks like the screen wasn't the problem, so now I'm going to carefully remove the rocker arm assembly. There's a tiny spring under that assembly, and we have to make sure that we don't lose it. After that, push a small diameter wire through the hole, and then spray some carb cleaner through it, and then we'll put the assembly back together again. Sometimes the screen will have a thin film of varnish on it that will keep fuel from flowing through it. You might have to lightly scratch the screen surface to help break up the varnish, along with some carburetor cleaner, of course. Now, if you buy a new rebuild kit, it will come with a new screen to replace the varnished one. Another reason why your chainsaw might not be starting is that the engine is basically worn out. Chainsaws were meant to be used at full speed and if the oil and gas mixture is off slightly it can easily destroy an engine in no time. For chainsaws it might be a good idea to buy pre-mixed fuel instead. They have a long shelf life and is already stabilized. That way if you don't use it for a long period the carburetor shouldn't get gummed up. After the carburetor is put back together, we'll reinstall it back onto the saw. Now I'm going to remove this black plastic piece so you can see it a little bit better as I reconnect the linkages. I'll replace it later on. After reconnecting the linkages, make sure you try out the throttle and the choke system, otherwise the saw may not start. As you can see, the choke lever is closing the choke flap on the carburetor, so we're good there. Now, if yours isn't closing, you might have bent the metal linkage when removing it, so you might have to bend it back into shape. Now since this chainsaw doesn't have a primer bulb and the fuel lines are empty, we're going to have to pull the rope a lot before it even tries and starts. I'm not looking forward to this part. So it died when I squeezed the throttle, so I'm going to adjust the carburetor for a little bit more fuel. However, to give you a better view of what I'm doing, I'm going to remove the cover and the plastic piece that's in the way. I'll turn the H screw counterclockwise a little bit, and then turn the idle screw in for a little bit more RPM, and then I'll turn the L screw out about the same as the H screw. Well, it didn't run for very long at all, so I'm going to increase the idle just a little bit more and then turn the L screw back where it was and then try it one more time.
well, it's strange, but I can't get it to rev up, and the chain isn't even trying to move. Now, when I try and move the chain, it seems like the chain brake is on, but when I test it, it wasn't on, so there's something else going on here. To deal with the revving problem, I'm going to check the spark arrestor screen because it could be clogged with carbon. Now, if it's clogged, then the engine can't breathe properly and it won't rev up. And unfortunately, I don't even find a screen, so there isn't an exhaust restriction, so that's not our problem. There's something else keeping us from revving up this engine. Now, if we go back to the chain problem, we can see it's not moving on the bar like it's supposed to. If the chain is stopping the engine from spinning, that would explain the revving problem. So to get a better look at the bar and chain, we need to remove the clutch cover. So I think I found the problem and why this chainsaw found its way to the garage sale. The needle bearing that the clutch drum spins on is completely gone, so the drum is hitting the case and locking it up, and that's why the engine won't rev up. So what happened to it? Well, I can't answer that question, but I think I have an idea. So it looks like they replaced the bar and chain from a different steel chainsaw, but they weren't compatible to this drum. This drum has 3 8 printed on it, and the chain they're using is marked 325. So the pitch is off, and the chain doesn't want to turn on the drum. Now, I don't know if they did it recently or if it was used this way, and that's why the needle bearing is gone, because there's so much excessive vibration and force caused by the mismatch that the bearing cage could have cracked and then basically disappeared. So the fix for this is to replace the drum and needle bearing for a new one and get a matching bar and chain. However, the cost of doing this might be higher than someone wanted to spend on this old chainsaw. And that's why it ended up in the garage sale. Now, I'm going to consider replacing the parts in the future, but I won't be doing that in this video. I do want to make sure that the engine will rev up, so I'll start it without the bar and chain and drum on it. I'm going to turn out the L screw for just a little bit more fuel to keep it idling. Well, it seems to be running, but I can't say how well since we don't have any load on the engine. In the end, it does start and run, but it might need a new carburetor, a drum, and needle bearing, plus a bar and a chain. The other option is to get a drum to match the bar and chain, making a much more affordable fix, but it won't be correct to this saw. So my question is, what should I do with this chainsaw? Should I replace all these parts? Or should I just put it in my man cave on the wall? Or is it even worth fixing? Now, I know what I would do, but I'm more curious about your answer. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Please feel free to ask any questions. and I hope to see you again in the next video.